Living with prompts is that even though your first reaction, and we heard a few different thoughts about whether scary, nervous, the thing is that all a prompt is is just something that gives you a guideline for what to write about. And prompts are really useful because in times when, say, you're taking a test or if your your teacher wants to give you something else to want to write about, then you'll have a prompt. And what are some examples of prompts that you've seen? Does anyone have an example of a prompt that they've seen? I'm sorry, there's like a big background noise. Uh, they, they just had a kid asking them to go on the play ride with them on Christmas Eve. That was the last prompt they had. Okay, great. Well, whether your prompt is uh, with a sleigh ride on Christmas Eve, which sounds like a really fun one, or maybe it's um, something a little more generic, like write about a time you were brave, then you'll see prompts taken, you'll see prompts where you'll be expected to write about them on tests, you'll see it in class, you'll see it in many different places. So it's super important that you have some good ideas on what to do. Prompts really don't have to be hard. Today we're going to be taking a look at some prompts. We're going to work on them together. We might even make up a couple prompts of our own, and it will be super fun. Now, if you're wondering how a 14-year-old knows this, then my name is Anora Skutok. My first book is called Flying Fingers, Mastering the Tools of Learning to Enjoy Writing, and I published this when I was seven. So you can see that I really enjoy writing short stories, fiction. I also love writing poetry. This is my second book, Dancing Fingers, and it's a collection of poems. Now, I... When I was about your age, I was super scared of essay writing, prompt writing, pretty much anything that wasn't a story or a poem. And so I was just always like, oh, I can't write essays, I'm really bad at this, help me. So I really did a lot of research, I tried to improve my game as far as writing went, and now I look at a prompt and I'm fairly confident in being able to answer it. So it's really all about how you think about it. To be prepared, tip number one is to read the prompt carefully, look for keywords, and think about the purpose of the prompt. So when I say purpose, what do I mean? Think about the purpose of the prompt. I, what would you have, why don't you have a prompt? What is the prompt supposed to help you do? Uh, All right, exactly. Okay. to get you writing, so it will help you add details to the paragraph, it will help really drive your paragraph as you begin to write it. Great. Now, ask yourself three questions. What is my purpose? So as I look at the prompt, what am I trying to do? If the prompt is write about a time from your own life, then I know that I have to look back to my own life and what I write should be something from my life. So you can ask, well, there are different kinds of purposes. Maybe your purpose would be to persuade someone to see your point of view. So I know that that was two big words there, but basically to make someone else agree with you and what you think. What is your audience? Who's going to be reading what you write? Will it be your teacher? Will it be someone grading a test? Will it be your parents? Will it be your little brother and sister? There are a bunch of different audiences you might have for writing. And what is my perspective? Does anyone know what perspective means? Don't think so. No. Perspective, I know, is, is kind of a big word. Well, think about how... Uh, have any of you ever argued with a brother or sister? I see a lot of raised hands. I've done that, too. Pretty much if you have a brother or sister, you might have gotten into a little conflict. Now, did you and your brother and sister have different ideas or see things from different places? 
Probably so. Maybe you were like, I think that we should go out to eat and eat at my favorite restaurant, the Taco Diner, and your sister was like, no way, we should stay in and I'm going to cook dinner because I'm a really, really good chef. And maybe you're like, no, you're not. Yes, I am. No, you're not. And it goes down from there. Now, what you just saw about the we should go out to eat, no, let's stay in, I'll cook, I'm a great chef, is two different perspectives. Perspective can mean a few different things, but in that case, a different perspective would mean a different um, angle on something, a different opinion. So, what is my perspective would be, how am I looking at this? How am I seeing this issue? So, for instance, if the issue is, should, we, should students get more or less homework? What would be your perspective on the issue? Do you want more or less homework? Okay, so maybe your perspective is students should get less homework. Imagine homework as this kind of issue that's floating in the air and you're all looking at it from different sides. Now, maybe my perspective about homework is, well, uh, Maybe I'm looking at it from this angle and I say, well, homework is really beneficial because it allows me to review what I've learned and it also can be good review before I take a test and it's making me practice for hard work that I might do later in life. So maybe I'm looking at homework from a different angle or a different perspective. So that's what perspective is. It's basically how you look at an issue. So purpose, audience, perspective. What is my purpose in writing this? Is my purpose to persuade? Does anyone want to give an example of a prompt that might ask them to persuade? So a prompt that asks you to persuade. Does anyone want to give an example about what that kind of prompt that might be? What would that say?
So, does anyone want to help me write an example of this? Actually, I'll, so I'm going to open up a Word document and we're going to see this, oops, see this happen right in front of us. Um, I'm going to start writing. So let's say my prompt is about penguins. Sorry, the word got just a little tight open up. So if you have a prompt and it's say and it's about penguins and you know the purpose of the prompt is to persuade your audience. So let's say your prompt is pick an animal that you really enjoy watching on the news or hearing more about and tell your audience about this animal. Why do you like it? Why should we like it? So if you had a favorite animal and you were trying to convince a friend why your favorite animal was the best, what would be some things you would come up with?
if any of you have ever gone to India or will ever go to India, you'll probably see um, occasionally there will be people riding on elephants, or there will be an elephant just hanging out by a house. It's a really common scene. So then I might continue on with developing some more of these supporting details. For instance, great memory. Elephants also have many different features which are useful to them. Great memory, speed, and the and their trunks. So now, I, as I continue on, I wanted to make sure that I wasn't getting too informed, that I was still convincing, so really trying to persuade people that elephant is my favorite animal and this should be your favorite animal too. But by adding in all these details about what elephants have, what makes them cool, I'm giving people reasons. If you just marched up to your parents and said, hey, mom, dad, I want a new video game, and just stopped there, your parents would be like, well, a video game, this costs a lot of money, and you probably don't have time to play it, and you should be doing your homework right now anyway. So when you're, when you're asking your parents for a video game, what do you do? What would you say to them if you're trying to convince them to buy you this video game, or this book, or something else? Okay, you really like it? What else might you say? Okay, it just came out and was new. What else? Maybe it's what is your favorite place and you're writing about your classroom. 
or anywhere that you're asked to write descriptively, you're adding details. Anywhere that you're asked to write persuasively, you're also adding details. And if you're asked to write informatively or tell somebody about something, then you're also adding details. So, details, 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 right? Details help you expand and they help you build that paragraph way more. So, let's go back on to the presentation. And there's another, oops, um, there's another way to think about this whole persuasive thing. Whenever you see an advertisement, so like maybe a, a sandwich advertisement or a Starbucks coffee advertisement on the side of the bus, you might not realize it, but these are examples of persuasive language. What are advertisements trying to get you to do? <laughs> Go to that movie, go to that store, buy that product, drink that uh, soda, eat that sandwich. Yeah, exactly. They're trying to get you to do something, and that's essentially what persuasive writing is about. Now, the way that you go about it, asking your parents for something versus an advertisement, obviously a little bit different. So that's persuasive. You can kind of remember it with advertisements. And then informative is where you're telling somebody about something. Like maybe if you have a little brother or sister, you could be telling them about something that you've learned. Or if you're giving a speech, like you're giving a speech to your school or you're giving a speech to a group of family members, then you would also probably be telling about something you learned or trying to teach. Your teacher is informing. So in anywhere where you're informing, you're probably not doing so much of the convincing. When you're informing, you're not saying, hey, you should buy me a video game. You're saying, did you know that video games have uh, a lot of math involved in the making of them or something like that? So it's facts and knowledge versus things that you're trying to prove or say are right. And then entertain. If you've ever read a really funny story or you've told a joke, or there are books that just make you laugh out loud, then you're being entertained. Anytime when you're having fun, essentially. So we write often to entertain. Maybe you would write something that you've made up. That would be entertaining. So entertaining, think of it as jokes or stories, fictional. Informing, you can associate with teaching or telling a little brother or sister about something you know. And persuading, just think of advertisements or trying to prove yourself right. And sometimes you might have more than one purpose. Like sometimes you will be trying to convince someone while you're telling a funny story and maybe you're throwing in some facts as well. So when you get a prompt, what is one of the first things that you do to be able one of the first things you do when I give you some, let's say, you need to write. What do you mean? Well, you can't do that. Oh, oh, really? Uh, an opening sentence? I, opening sentence. An opening sentence, great. So when you first get a prompt, yeah, you'll definitely write an opening sentence, but you don't want to write the opening sentence without having read the prompt at all. <laughs> you want to read the prompt, so that would be definitely number one, is read the prompt and make sure you understand what it's asking for. And that way sometimes, um, I will admit, sometimes I've been taking tests and I'm not the best instructions taker. So I will be looking at the instructions and I'll be like, oh, I'm just reading quickly through it and I mark an answer and then I realize, oh no, I missed the big not or I missed the big except and so I chose the wrong answer. So it's really important to read the prompt very carefully, make sure that you understand it and then you can get started on your opening sentence. And another thing that you can do, well, if you're having a real hard time thinking of ideas, if you get stuck somewhere, you can just brainstorm. Maybe on another piece of paper or uh, on the side of your test book when it's like that. So remember what we did with the elephant. We, I didn't just, you know, start writing because I wanted to kind of get those details. You can start with a little bit of an outline if you want. So, for instance, for this favorite animal as elephant, you saw how we began with elephant. Why are elephants cool? Really, they lined up all these different details. So you can start with that sort of little outline to begin with if you want, and then develop it into a paragraph. But definitely your opening sentence is where you want to begin. Just make sure to read the prompt, understand it, and if you want to, you can develop an outline to help you organize. So 
We also know that you want to understand the purpose of the prompt. What is the prompt trying to get me to do? And that really helps you develop a better paragraph or essay as you're writing. Now, what are some things that you think make good writing? Different kinds of dishes. Alright, so I like food. 
food because it has many great qualities. It gives me energy, there's a big variety of different kinds of dishes, my favorite dishes taste really good, and eating with family and friends is a fun social experience. Now that is a bit longer and you, you'll notice that I added details, it wasn't just changing some of the sentences, but when you're writing you want to make sure, are my sentences flowing? Do, are they really short and choppy or do I have details? Am I connecting some sentences that maybe can be a bit longer? And you don't want to make every single one of your sentences long. Like for instance in this one it's getting a bit long. You want to vary it so you have long sentence, short sentence, long sentence, short sentence. And that way you don't, again, tire your, your reader. It would, to use that food, food, food example, it wouldn't be fun if someone said, Hello, my name is Adora. I like your name. Your name is pretty. Now, why don't we eat something? I like food. You like food too, don't you? You know, if, if somebody talked in really short sentences all the time, you would sound a bit like a robot, right? So, again, apply what you know about how you hear things. We use long sentences, we use short sentences when you're talking. We do it naturally. So just do something you already know how to do with speaking and put that in your writing. Great, so we now know, don't use the same words over and over again. Have good word choice. Choose to use synonyms. Do you know about synonyms? Synonyms are words that are the same. Very good. So what is a synonym for big? Large, gigantic, enormous, vast, massive. There are so many synonyms for big. Um, what about, let me think of another good one. What about, um, let's see, uh, how about nice? Nice. specific. So what would be a general word versus a specific word would be something like person versus little girl. Person, it could be a man, it could be a woman, it could be a boy, it could be a girl. If I made it specific, I would say little girl. So taking a pretty general word like good, and maybe I would refine it, I would make it more specific. It was really tasty, or it was super um, well, tasty, delicious, they're kind of synonyms. What are some other ways I might be more specific about good? from a prompt. So let's review quickly. 
Um, if you are sitting down and you're starting to write, and you see that you're kind of using some of the same words over and over again, what could you do? I'm sorry? I said use more specific words. Use more specific words. Very good. If you see yourself using a word like good, narrow it down. What are some other things you might do? What about synonyms? You could look for synonyms. Yep. Okay. So, and what if you see that your sentences are all really, really short? You do all short oh, Emma? Um, you make it longer. You could make it longer, and another thing that you could do is combine some of your sentences. So let's say you have, I like food, and food is good. You could say, I like food because food is good. You know, you can combine some of them. Now, not all sentences will sound great when they're combined, and you want to make sure that you're keeping that flow as you're writing. But when you are looking at uh, what you've written, and you consider it for word choice, sentence structure, all these things, details, then you can really add a lot more flavor to writing. Great job. So, let's go back to the presentation and take a look at a couple examples, and we're going to see if we can help improve them. Okay. Oh, actually, um, for a quick second here, let's take a look at this prompt and say what is the purpose, whether we're explaining, persuading, or entertaining. So, if you were going to write instructions for building a go-kart, so you're writing instructions for building a go-kart to someone. You're saying, here's how you build a go-kart, step number one, step number two. What is your purpose? What are you trying to do? Are you trying to convince them of something? Are you trying to inform them? Are you trying to entertain them? What would be your purpose? Okay. Hey, say hi. Inform them? Inform them. Very good. You're trying to inform them. If you've ever read an instruction manual, you'll know it's a... It's not trying to say, hey, go-karts are awesome, yay, buy more go-karts. It's, here's how you build it, step number one, two, and three, right? Great. What about, write a letter to some aliens that lists the reasons why you shouldn't destroy planet Earth. So, say, aliens don't destroy Earth, you know, we're, we're really great and listing all the reasons about why they shouldn't do that. Okay, uh, you? That would be persuading. Yeah, exactly. So all these different prompts, it's fairly easy to decide, oh, what are they trying to do? You know that this is informing. You know that that one was, the one about the aliens was persuading. Great, so good review. Uh, another thing is to know your audience. When you ask who is my audience, that's who is going to be reading what I write. Now, your audience might usually be your teacher or um, the, the person grading the test, maybe if it's like a statewide test. Well, whoever your audience is, knowing your audience is very important. This is why, if you were writing to your sister or brother about your mom, you wouldn't need to include all this information about your mom. Like, hi, sister or brother, our mom is great because she does all this work for our family. She not only works outside the home, but also takes care of us. She cooks every day, and it's always a delicious meal. She does so much work. You know, your brother and sister would probably know a lot of that anyway, so you wouldn't need to include it. But if you were writing with someone who had never met your mother before, didn't know how much she worked, then of course you would need to include all this side information. So knowing your audience helps you understand what do I include and what do I leave out. The important thing to remember is that your audience might not know that much about you or your life. So when you're writing about things that might seem really obvious to you, you might need to explain it. So if I said, I ran across the street and started playing with or started hanging out with Ashley, then you would be like, well, who's Ashley? And I would explain with my next door neighbor, Ashley, or something like that. So adding little explanations, adding little details, help people understand you better since we don't know your life that well. And even if your audience does know you, when you're writing for a test, it's pretty important to add details right formally and explain your topic and who and what you're talking about. So always good practice. Uh, okay, so let's take a look at this prompt. Or sorry, not prompt, this response. So maybe it's to write about 
your life. And so this person said, I live in Harrisburg with Tyler, Jesse, Nana, Snowball, and Mom. Every day I ride to Burke Hills. I sit next to Pacey and Catherine. We are learning about quirks. Mrs. Huxley says I am a natural. Afterward, I go over to Sasha's. So what are some questions you might have about this? Looking at this, what are some things that aren't so clear? Very good. Who are these people? Who is Tyler, Jesse, Nana, Snowball, and Mom? Who are these people? Are they her family? Is this the retirement home community? Is this um, brothers and um, a pet? And, uh, you know, so there are all these different people. Most likely it's probably family. But it would be really hard just reading that. It's like, who are these people? Exactly. Every day I ride to Burke Hills. What is Burke Hills? So it, is it a school? Is it a shopping mall? Is it, what exactly is Burke Hills? I sit next to Pacey and Catherine. So suddenly sitting down, you know, where is this? Who are Pacey and Catherine? We are learning about quirks. Mrs. Hudson says I'm a natural. So let's say this is school. And afterward I go over to Sasha's. So who do you think Sasha would be? Uh, okay. Right. Okay, so maybe it could be a friend. But the thing is that, so let's say it's a friend, but if you just read afterward, I go over to Sasha's, you wouldn't be able to really know that for sure. It could be a babysitter. It could be a relative. It could be someone who's, um, you know, whose house they go over to to work. Like, let's say they are cutting the lawn for them, mowing the lawn. So this paragraph has a lot of questions because it doesn't do enough explaining. Whoever heard it would be, oh, well, I know exactly where Harrisburg is, and I know who these people are, but us, as readers, we don't know, so you have to explain things. So, let's rewrite this and make it more clear. So, I live in Harrisburg with my family, Tyler, Jesse, maybe you could be more specific. Um, my brothers, Tyler and Jesse. My grandma, we call her Nana. My cat, Snowball. And my mom. Every day I ride to, so Burke Hills, what do you think Burke Hills would be? The school, yeah, probably so, let's say it's a school. Every day I ride to Burke Hills, my school. I sit next to uh, friends, enemies, classmates, Pacey and Catherine. Okay, so next to my friends, Pacey and Catherine, great. In science class, we are learning about quarks. Our teacher, Mrs. Huxley, says I'm in and then adding in, oops, after school, I go over to my friend Sasha's house. Okay, so, wow, this is on such a delay. I'm stepping away and it's still typing. All right, so, wow, yeah, slow computer. Okay, so, this is definitely much better. It explains a lot more. So before there was some amount of mystery, right? Because we didn't know what this author was really talking about. What Burke Hills was, who these people were, who Sasha is, all that other stuff. So suddenly we've explained everything. I live in Harrisburg with my family, my brothers, Tyler and Jesse, my grandma, we call her Nana, my cat Snowball, and my mom. Every day I ride to Burke Hills, my school. I sit next to my friends, Pacey and Catherine, in science class, we are learning about quarks. Our teacher, Mrs. Huxley, says I'm a natural. 
After school, I go over to my friend Sasha's house. So see how we've taken all these things that we yeah. didn't that we didn't understand before, and we've inserted a little explanatory notes. My family, my brothers, my grandma. So just by putting a little word in front of name or something, you can clarify it tremendously. So suddenly the reader is like, oh, I get it. So explain things to people who may not know your life and make sure to know your audience. Knowing your audience means that you know how much you need to explain. If you were writing to Tyler and Jesse, then Tyler and Jesse would be like, um, we know that we're your brothers. You don't need to explain that to us. But if you're writing on a test or if you're writing for your teacher, you would want to insert my brothers, my sister, all that. So knowing your audience helps you know how much you want to explain. So I think, oops, to go back, know your audience, look at your prompt and understand your purpose, and take what you know about word choice and sentence structure to make your sentences really flow and develop a better paragraph and a better piece of writing. All right, I hope that you've learned uh, from our writing from prompts and that next time you see a prompt, you won't feel scared, nervous, but you'll just look at that prompt and say, okay, I can do this. Just read it, know the purpose, what am I trying to do here? Strong opening sentence. And uh, what is another thing that you want to make sure you have when you're writing? Um, Punctuation, or punctuation, you say. Punctuation, yeah, definitely, very good. Well, you want to have all these things. You want to have punctuation, you want to have proper grammar, you want to make sure that you don't have mistakes, so you'll leave yourself some time to check back on it. But another thing, the most important thing that you want to have when you're writing, and it doesn't matter whether it's a prompt or whether it's a story, is that you really love what you're writing and you're having fun. And that's something that I think is possible with any kind of writing, because to me, writing is just about one of the funnest things you can do. So if there's any questions, I can answer them quickly. And thank you so much. She wondered if spelling, oh yeah, spelling. Um, I would say, so when you're first writing, just get your ideas out. Don't worry too much about, oh, is this correct? But afterwards, make sure to go back and check. And, you know, make sure that you have your periods and your commas and everything. So you can start when you're just brainstorming and getting ideas out. Don't worry too much. But when you are making your final draft, what you're going to be handing to the teacher or turning in in the test, make sure that things are spelled right. Well, thank you. I have your coming in. Uh, so thank you very much. Okay, well thank you very much guys. I hope you enjoyed writing for prompts. Remember to have lots of fun with your writing and I hope you have a good day. Thanks guys. Bye. Bye. There's a second one? I think so. I'm doing two in a row? Yeah. Uh, you definitely could have told me that. <laughs>